So this is a conference about Ethereum Classic. So Ethereum Classic is the post-DAO fork, um, and this, I think, is the first uh, ETC summit. When we got involved in Ethereum Classic, um, I think one of the things that was lacking um, was an organized uh, community. Uh, it came out of nowhere. Um, and um, being a big supporter of Ethereum Classic and being a big supporter of, um, of the technology protocol development, we wanted to do our part and help support increased communication, collaboration, uh, and, and bring together all the various stakeholders um, at least once a year. So here at the conference in Hong Kong, I was describing where we've come from, the journey so far, and the achievements that we've made, and also our objectives for 2018. I think that our team has two main uh, properties that I really like. The first one is that uh, we are all passionate about the things that we do. We, we are working all the day. I, I, I've seen pull requests made at, uh, late at night. So we are, we are working all the time. Uh, I like that. And we are also very professional and we really uh, try to create the best software of, as, as we can, so that's really, really important. It's a, a distributed team. Alan and Nico and some of those guys are in Argentina. There's three or four guys in, in Warsaw. Nobody knew each other. Uh, originally, we had to, we were going to base this on the Scorex framework. So uh, I went to Russia and spoke to Alex. Um, so the presentation was really about how all that came together. It's a funny story, but uh, three countries that were on our history are like Ireland, as the, our project manager is located there, uh, Buenos Aires, Argentina, uh, where we are from, and also uh, Athens, where we get, when we uh, met uh, for the first time, the whole team gathered to the, uh, together there. And it's a, it's a funny story because those three countries were really, really into uh, economy issues. and. That's something that you cannot raise from your past. And that background uh, allows you to think about, okay, maybe this, te this technology, Ethereum Classic, allows us to uh, create more fair systems where people can interact with the economy without uh, relying on central banks and all that creepy stuff. So the value of meeting up at a conference like this is we go away and we spend a long time working remotely, you know, together, but remote from the community. And so we put together a load of functionality and we test it and we put it out there. And so when we come to events like this, we get to talk to other people and we find out that they are interested in the stuff that we're doing. They are using the software that we have. And so it's really validating and it's a great experience to kind of come and, and, uh, and meet people who are basically our customers. I think in the digital currency space, there's um, a little too much um, uh, interactions done over social media and through um, anonymous forums and, and, and I think it's important to get people together, meet each other, um, challenge each other, uh, but do it in a way that is, 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 is respectful um, and fosters communication and collaboration. So I do think it's important to have summits like this. Um, I absolutely expect that we'll do it again um, next year and hopefully the year after that and, and hopefully this will become uh, an annual event that everybody in the community looks forward to. Our biggest challenges are that first we are not building like a regular application. It's not like something that you will find on anywhere inter on, over internet or whatever. Uh, we are building really hardcore stuff. It's really complex uh, and there are also security concerns. People put money in this software. So we need to create the highest quality software as we can. We'd expect to uh, integrate the Sputnik VM. Um, we'd expect that the Daedalus wallet will include several plugins, so one for uh, developing Ethereum Classic apps. We'd expect the Daedalus wallet to include a multi-currency component based on their plugin architecture. Um, We'd also expect to support some of the ECIPs that are coming down the line, so probably uh, the ZN Snarks ECIP looks pretty good, and the 1035 uh, anonymous addresses. Scala is a, is a programming language that uh, runs on the Java Virtual Machine, so that's a, a good point of it because it allows you to uh, run on an env environment that has been battle tested in production. It has been running for several years, and that's really good if you're trying to build a good quality software. You, you need that 
you need to run it in a stable environment and in a, also it has the, the, the property that it can you can program in two different paradigms you can program in object-oriented paradigm and also in uh, functional programming uh, and that's really good because a uh, functional programming paradigm allows you to create uh, less and more secure code a lot of the work that uh, has been done in other parts of the company will probably affect this so uh, the non-interactive proof of proof of work papers that are coming out we end up creating contracts to allow interactions between ETC and Ethereum itself, ETC and Bitcoin, those papers are coming out. And then there's the work that the uh, guys are doing on the K framework, pulling apart the EVM and, and creating formal semantics for that. So with any luck, that will result in the possibility of writing contracts in some subset of Scala that can be compiled to run on the EVM or a slightly different version of the EVM. Um, and we'll have all of the formal verification of that, so then it'll be a question of trying to create some formal proofs around those contracts. So that's, uh, that's something that's going to be kind of interesting and uh, extremely new.